out the way. Hello everybody and welcome. I'm Andy Collins and this is Game Over. And here we are still at Fort Park. Now as you know, a few weeks back I was at Silverstone driving a load of police for about 140 miles an hour and I've decided to put my driving skills to the test and so far I'm doing okay. Well the truth is it's on the track and it's all I drive itself, but you know what I mean? Anyway, coming up on today's show, we've got the preview, we've got the features, we've got the assassins. Um, but first up is the news, so sit back, relax and enjoy. Marketing force. You can't turn your head of late without meeting the steely glare of that bloke with the yellow eyes and chicken tikka complexion. Why? As if you didn't know. Star Wars Episode One is soon to be released, 21 years after its own sequel. And with the movie, the tie-ins. From comics, novels, toys and games, Hasbro paid $100 million for the license rights. There's going to be what enough prequel paraphernalia to float the planet Tatooine. Gamers certainly don't miss out. There are two titles from the film. Phantom Menace for the PlayStation and Races on the N64. PC owners get the pick of either. Races is reviewed later in today's show, so no more on that. But Phantom Menace looks unlikely to disappoint. An action-adventure title, it strives to be hugely faithful to the plot of the film, with every one of its levels reenacting real Excuse scenes. Me, Your dreams come true. Get to play a Star Wars character in a Star Wars film. Heaven! Racist is available now, as is the PC version of Phantom Menace. PlayStation gamers, wait calmly, young one. Your Phantom has an August release date. as if the Trade Federation is preparing to attack Naboo. There will be no problem with that, man. Look, you coward. We can do this. No, it's love. Do it for me, Bobby. Do it for me. Right. <laughs> Don't stop shaking. He ain't that big. Right. OK, that was the news. Time now for the preview. As you know, here on Game Over, we'd like to bring you exclusive previews. Well, we haven't failed you. So once again, here is an exclusive Game Over preview. <laughs> GoldenEye. It's an incredibly silly name for a movie, but that didn't stop Rare from releasing one of the best first-person shoot-em-ups ever, and amazingly on the Nintendo 64. Who would have thought a mere cartridge could be packed to the brim with dozens of beautifully realised levels, tons of weapons, cool gadgets, amazingly realistic animation, and some of the best artificial intelligence ever to grace a game? Indeed, many PC owners had to scrape their jaws off the floor after a thorough inspection. Well, it's been a long time coming, but more detailed and new footage has finally been released on Perfect Dark, Rear's new shooter. This game is being touted as GoldenEye 2, but sadly, that isn't necessarily the case. You see, EA managed to nab the game from license, and are releasing Tomorrow Never Dies, meaning no one else can have the slick British spy in their game. Rear, however, used this setback as an excuse to take their sequel of sorts into new surroundings. Gone is the polygonized Pierce Brosnan, and in comes Kirby Supermix, Joanna Dark, hence the new title. The two-year-old GoldenEye engine returns, but it's been highly modified and tweaked for even better performance. In gaming terms, this means fantastic new levels, far removed from the prequel's realistic scenery, and loads of amazing new weaponry and gadgets. Oh, also expect to get into shootouts with the odd alien or two. Cutscenes have been heavily implemented into Perfect Dark, over 90 minutes worth in fact, and even in their real-time generated form, they're impressive. We're talking quality cinematic camera work and decent voice acting. A far cry from titles like Resident Evil and Blue Stinger. GoldenEye is still considered to be the best multiplayer title available for the N64. But no doubt this will change when Miss Stark arrives on the scene. Bots are highly intelligent computer-controlled opponents. And the single player could theoretically go up against up to ten bots. Even four-player games could have extra boats sneaking about the same levels. This could lead to a potentially staggering 14-player deathmatch scenario on a single N64. Sadly, Perfect Dark is still far from finished, with a release date penciled in for December at the earliest. But think of it this way. How good will this game be with another six months of expensive tweaking? Game Over can hardly wait. In fact, please excuse me, I need to lie down. Right, we're nearing the end of the show. Now, as you know, I always like to end the shows with a, like a really big, scary-like event. And uh, tomorrow, we are going on one of the, the most scariest rides here at Fort Park. 
for Lisa, my little donkey donut, says, well, well today we'll take it nice and easy and we'll, we'll, we'll put you on the Calgary... What's it called again? Stampede. Calgary. The Calgary Stampede. And, well, it, it don't look that scary, does it, really? So I'm having me little donkey donuts. I've got, I've got a packet of 20 here, so... Oh, mm, I'm going to eat all of these. You got. You go to the speech, yeah. Mm. Mm. Lovely. <laughs> Did we mention that Game Over had gone to L.A.? You know, L.A., California, in America. We did? Did we? Oh, well, anyway, when we were at E3, in L.A., we took the opportunity to catch up with one of the hottest American developers on the okay. scene, Naughty Dog. Naughty Dog, in case you didn't know, are responsible for the hugely popular Crash Bandicoot series, the first two of which have recently gone platinum, whose eponymous hero remains one of the PlayStation's only serious attempts to create a cartoony franchise in the way that Nintendo have done with the extended Mario family. Game Over spoke to Jason Rubin and Andy Gavin, and we'll be doggone hilarious. In a Game Over exclusive, they told us about their top secret new title. I can tell you that Crash Team Racing is very new. It's a character-based card game. You get to play for the first time as Cortex, as Tiny, the other enemies from the Crash Bandicoot title, and it'll be coming out fourth quarter this year. Crash Team Racing has a brand new engine. We believe it's the most powerful engine on the PlayStation. The engine drives over 20 tracks, including six battle modes and 16 standard tracks. There are also boss level tracks and other types of tracks, so it's a very, very large game. Uh, you get to play as eight characters at the start, but you can actually get up to 13 total. There's some hidden characters. Almost everybody from the Crash universe is back somewhere in the game in some form, playable or other. Creating a Mario Kart style racer has long been something of a holy grail for PlayStation developers and users alike. But with the patchy S cards disappointing and the imminent release of the promising looking Speed Freak. So Jason and Andy think that Crash Team Racing will be a dog's dinner or the dog's... Crash Team Racing supports like one, two, three and four player play. So with the multi-task you can like play against three of your friends, really, you know, frantic, like head to head, like facing, split screen, it's really fun. Crash Bandicoot has been massively successful for Naughty Dog and for the PlayStation, and has garnered some very famous admirers along the way. Hideo Kojima, the enigmatic creator of this year's PlayStation Smash Metal Gear Solid, told Game Over that he rated Crash Bandicoot 3 as his favourite game. With such high praise directed at Naughty Dog, we thought it only fair to ask Andy and Jason if any new games had caught their eyes at E3. I haven't gotten that much time away from our booth, but in my short walk around, Gran Turismo 2 stands out as beautiful. Ape Escape is a wonderful product. Uh, Quake 3 Tournament is, uh, is wonderful. Arena is, is a great game. Um, it's really looking like the PlayStation is finally coming into its own after five years of development. Crash Team Racing does indeed, in its early development stages, seem to be shaping up very nicely and could in fact prove to be the first step towards a cross-genre Crash franchise. Those of you waiting for the fourth installment of Crash Bandicoot proper may despite what Jason has to say about the quality of new games for the PlayStation, have to wait for the release of its mythical successor, PlayStation 2. Amongst whose demos there appeared a brief snatch of a very familiar looking bandicoot. Here I am in the Calgary Stampede and uh, I've got a bad feeling about this. Now, Amy Jane is the operator. I've, I've, I've paid her a large amount of money not to go too fast, but she's got that evil smile on her face like she's just spoken to Lisa and Lisa said, Go for it, girl. So, um, I'm terrified now. Anyway, um, you lot go to the Assassins, listen to what the Assassins are going to say, and then, and then when you come back, I will be in full flight, and I'll try and say goodbye. Um, well, off you go, then. Go to the Assassins. Not too far, please. Not frenzy hits town and if seeing the film buying the lightsaber and drinking the droid juice isn't enough for you you really ought to check out the assassin's review of star wars episode one racer on the n64 now unless you've been living under a rock you'll know that this is based on the new upcoming phantom menace movie one of the first star wars movies to be made in what over 17 years now and it's actually based on a sequence in the movie the pod race sequence where anakin skywalker rush you know zooms around and in a pod and shows off his piloting skills, you know, the sort of skills that makes him um, such an amazing pilot in his future uh, life when he becomes Darth Vader. And um, it's an interesting concept. Um, and I haven't seen the movie yet, but it looks very true to the movie. From the sequences I've seen in the trailer, 
you know, you do get similar design pods zipping around the scenery. I mean, a good point of reference, basically, for the control mechanisms we've got here is it's a lot like Wipeout. You have that same sort of like bobbing on a cushion of air sort of feel to it. Um, it's really nice. There's some nice graphical touches, actually, because when, you, when you're sort of like doing a sharp turn or something, you can actually see the flaps on the thrusters lift up and, and shut down and, and stuff. So actually, it's a nice touch. That, I like that. But um, control-wise, it's very, very easy to get your hands on and just play. It's fluid. It's nice, it's a pleasant sensation actually hammering it along in these machines. And fair play, they do move really fast. I mean, we're talking lightning speeds. All in all, a decent racer for the N64, but nowhere one of the best. Um, I don't think it's as good as Wipeout, and uh, it's not as good as F-Zero either. I mean, this will sell, undoubtedly, it'll sell on Star Wars license. Um, maybe one for fans only. If you're just looking for racing, all-out racing, then um, go for this. But if you're looking for something a bit more, then I'm afraid it's not going to deliver. Well, there we are. That's the end of today's show. Um, so far, so good. Oh, my good God. That's the end of today's show. Join us tomorrow when I will be going on uh, Fort Park's biggest ride of all. Um, oh, dearie me. Uh, remember, if you want to get in touch with us, our website address is www.tvchannel.co.uk. Until tomorrow, stay lucky, be happy, and remember, keep smiling. Amy J, you lying to me. You said you weren't going to go too fast. This is Starbite. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye. Stay tuned as Chips and Everything is after the break.